Hi, good evening, everyone. This is Travis from Downtown Divas. I am so happy to be back here again um, on Blog Talk Radio. Thanks to my good friend Dawn for uh, giving me this opportunity and to be a part of the Air Nation Radio family. Um, I'm here tonight. I have an exciting interview that I had about two, um, a few months ago. I, I think probably like six months ago, maybe a little longer. Uh, his name is Theory, and he is a new and upcoming hip hop artist. Some of you might already know him. Some of you are probably there for the interview that we had with him. Great guest. Very um, inspirational. Very, very motivational, and he, he had some just great advice for just living life and for being happy and for being the person that you are um, and sticking true to who you are. Um, new hip-hop artists in the charts, awesome music. He's going to share all that with you during this interview. I can't wait for you to hear it. Enjoy, sit back, have a glass of wine, and here it goes. Here's Siri. Thanks, folks. Here <laughs> you're on the call. If you unmute. Hey, what's going on? Not too much. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So um, this is Gap Town Divas, which um, I know you called in last night when Billy B was on, so which is awesome. So you kind of understood how the show ran. Um, yeah. And. I'm your host, Travis, of course, um, and my fabulous co-host is actually with me tonight, which is awesome. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Hi. Hi. Thanks for Hi. joining us. Sorry I missed everything last night. Technical difficulties. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me once again. Yo, it's it's my pleasure. Um, so, how are you? I'm good. I've been uh, I've been pretty busy today. Um, you know, uh, some. Uh, some 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 side celebration and uh handling calls and emails and what have you. Nice. Nice. So this is all um, you know, just with your getting your your career going, right? Like calls with management and everything? Um yeah, and um uh, I mean most of my most of my calls uh are international. So uh I'm oh, wow. I'm up, I'm up pretty much like 5.30 in the morning because everybody is either six, seven, eight hours ahead of me. Wow. So you have long days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have pretty long days because sometimes, like, I could wake up at 5 and I'm talking to someone in Russia, and then from there I'm talking to someone in France, and from there I'm talking to someone in Italy, and then I'm dealing with someone in Switzerland, and then, like, at midnight, New York time, I'm dealing with somebody in Los Angeles when it's 9 o'clock there, so I yeah. sometimes I have, I have pretty long days. Yeah, it's so, exciting, though. Do <laughs> you ever go to bed? Oh, oh it's not. It's great. I, 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 it, it, it keeps me going. It's very thrilling, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. So you are on our show, and I want you to um, talk about whatever you wanted to and feel as relaxed as you can, um, just, you know, I want the viewers and the listeners and anyone that's going to listen to our show right now, you know, whether they're in the chat room, like I said before, or there are uh-huh. people that, you know, are listening and can't be in the chat room, or there are people that are going to listen after the fact. I want them to get, understand after what listening to the show who Theory is and what he's about and about your music and about you, okay? Sure. Hey, and I, I, I want I, you to... I'll do, the, I'll do the best I can. Um, I'm, uh... <laughs> It's funny because, like, you know, as as an entertainer, um, being how I am on stage and and how I may sound in the songs that I that I put out, um, you know, people always get a different side of me when they see me in person because, like, I can be a little shy. So, um, you know, I, I I'll definitely do the best I can. <laughs> you shy? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Theory, it's if funny, it's Billy B last night would have let you talk more, you would have talked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that funny. Nah, yeah. I, I, I guess, I guess, yeah, because the energy was so high with me. Because I was just like, wow, man. You know, because I, I went, I, I went to school at, um, you know, FIT, and um, I also studied at a laboratory institute of merchandising in New York City. So I mean, what? I, I studied, I studied what? fashion all my, all my life. You know, Crazy. and um, and yeah, and and like it's just like when 
I, that that was a name that that we've always heard, even in the classroom. So, to you know, to the simple fact that I'm on this call and I'm talking to him, like, like, bro, you have no <laughs> idea. Like, I followed you for a long time. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so I was I was definitely uh, ready to take the floor because I was so in awe. So wait, you just said you went to school for what again? Um, I studied. I studied. Uh, well, first I studied um fashion merchandising. Um, so what? I studied fashion That's merchandising, what? and my um my minor was menswear design. Um, I used <laughs> to work for Don, I used to work for Donna Karen, um, in her in her textile house. Oh, how what? exciting! That's crazy. I, I thought I That's heard it That's amazing. Wrong. I was like, what? And then she's like, what? So, do you think? Are you going to have your own line eventually? You think? Um, it, it's it's definitely a possibility because um, I've always had like you know a, a passion, a side passion yeah. for you know the the fashion industry, and I mean like I, I grew fond to like different designers and like so it isn't just you know when I when I see them I'm just like oh yeah I like that like there's a reason for me liking it. like my if you ask me who's my favorite designer still or fashion house I'm gonna say Tom Ford because I, I just I love their work you know and. I studied Chanel, and then, like, when Carl Lagerfeld took it over, I used to work for Tommy Hilfiger. What? And, you know, oh. Yeah, so I was I was really, like, within that. And, and this is this was before, like, my, my calling for, for music took me on, you know. Wow. But then, but then I, I, later, I, later, I later went into marketing. So um, I just kind of, like, used the, the skills and expertise for marketing, you know, with my music. And that's what I do. I market my own music. That is crazy. You are so talented. It's amazing. Oh, oh thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so do you now do you do your own um producing of the music or do you do, do you do everything or Um I I I work with um a a collection of people now. Um okay. it's uh I mean just pretty much all over the world. I mean uh from South America to Brazil, you know, uh Eastern Europe, Western Europe. And um, from some areas in Asia, and pretty much what it is now. Cause I, I mean, the style of music I do is this electronic dance music, uh, EDM. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I link up with these DJ slash producers, and what they do is they they make a collection of songs, like uh, you know, composed beats, and uh-huh. I, I write to them. And as I write to them, then I produce the record with the vocals, the the arrangements, the the lyrics, and then we, you know, kind of like marry marry each other together to, to just make this one full record. So that, that's that's really much what I've been doing. Yeah, and it's a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. Um, and um, a, as it as it's you know gotten professional, I, I realized how even much longer of a process it is just to make a record. You know. Um, yeah. Before, I mean, when I when I like first started out music, I I would just record in front of a, a little microphone and, at a computer. Yeah. And um I mean there was there was no mixing involved, nothing. I just recorded it and and there it is. That was my song. Like, hey, listen to my new song that I just recorded <laughs> in a half hour. You know? Um but now it, it could it can take almost uh three, four, five months to just finish one record. Yeah, and get it right, get it exactly where you want it. Yeah, especially when you work with people who are very tedious with uh sounds and, and you know, bit by bit and putting things together it. It, you know, and and now working with the team, so you you have to like really come come on one accord of of what sound we we all feel comfortable with. Mhm. So but it's fun. Uh, uh, sounds like more than fun. Why don't you tell our audience audience some uh, people that you've worked with um, in collaborating for this music, like you know whether it's singers or just anyone, just. Uh, you know, share with share with the audience a little bit of who you've been, you know, working with. Okay. Um. I mean. Um. I. I guess it's the name. Of, you know, this ones that just like jump out of my mind. Um. Uh. I remember, like, in in my beginnings, I I, I worked with a bad boy recording artist that they signed. Um. Her name was Sherry Dennis, and she was kind of up and coming like I was, and we we did like a remix together, and then. I worked with uh, some other hip hop artists from Def Jam Recordings, and um, my my largest collaboration was with um, Akon. And, oh my uh, lord! And uh, <laughs> I, I I went over to California, and I I worked on a, a project for um, it was 
FIFA. FIFA was doing a project for uh, the World Cup, and what they they had an idea to gather different countries um, all together and do like a full, like a big song for the World Cup. So uh, they they were picking, you know, people from each country to represent their country, and um, they contacted me. Um, it was uh, it was administered by Pepsi, and they contacted me to represent the United States, which I was, like, completely honored. Yeah, So I, I, I went out and uh, recorded the song with Akon, and we shot the music video. So that was a really, really good collaboration. Wow. And, um, um, and other, other, other things is, like, just a lot of up, up-and-coming artists, just um, people who haven't really established a name yet, but, like, you know, they, they're on the same plateau as, as I, like, just out there and just, you know, grinding their work every day. That is just, it's just to hear you, like, say, so. I mean, just in the so ta- the little time you've been doing this, I mean, how far you've come, how far, you. what you've done, you know what I mean? The experiences you've had, it's just, congratulations, yeah. seriously. I, I, I'm telling you, it, it, it is it is truly a blessing to um, even be able to, to utter these words, because, like, I, I remember when I didn't, I, I didn't know where to turn. Um, for what I was doing, and you know, because I, I started, I started making music just from being inspired by, you know, early, early hip hop um, artists such as Nas, Jay Z, Biggie Smalls, Wu Tang Clan, and listening to them like gave me the inspiration and just say, hey, I, I think I can do that too. And uh, you know, along with my, along with my peers, I started to, you know, make some raps. Mm-hmm. And um, like from those raps, like, you know, they weren't really full songs, but, like, I, I was I was getting the niche of it. And then it was funny because as I was making these raps, continuously in these songs I kept saying the word theory. And a friend of mine back, back then was like, I think that should be your name. And I was like, you think so? And he's like, yeah, it just, it just rings well. Like, you should call yourself theory. So I, like, I took it. And um, but I I just took it because it sounded good. I I really didn't come into I don't think I came into place with the name yet. I just thought it was cool. It was fun. Um, and then I I took I took that and went to California. I used to live in uh, Long Beach. Oh. And, um, I you know tried to do some rap there, but it was very very difficult coming from New York because it was this whole East Coast West Coast so West- rivalry. <laughs> That just yeah. wasn't really sitting well at all. And, yeah, um, crazy. Yeah, and uh, and and I, I learned that the moment your dreams are crushed, they begin. And, oh wow. Um, it was it was a moment where I was on stage and I was doing this this rap battle, and when I was doing the rap battle, like I I literally like was like it ended before I thought I was even onto something. Like, and I felt like everything was over. I put all my eggs in one basket thinking that this was going to be my moment to shine my talent and no one even looked, you know, glanced at it. So, like, I was ready to just give all this up. I didn't want to make music anymore. I didn't want to make any more raps. And I was like, I just get me out of here. I want to go back to New York. I don't, you know, I, so I, I went back to New York and I, like, kind of just stopped for a while and, um, one of my family members, my uncle, was saying, hey, you know, um, like, I was listening to some of your songs, like, in your demo, and, like, you are really, really talented. Like, you, you need to keep doing this. Like, you can't stop. You can't give up because the moment you give up, you never know what was the next step. And he said, you know, he said, look at it this way, and, I, and I'll take this to the day I die. He says, um, the moment you step out, you know, like, on on the, on the edge of a building, you know, close your eyes and know that you'll land without even thinking twice. And, I mean, just that just, like, hit me with, like, this huge surge, and I just, you know, started writing more songs, and I was feeling more confident, and then that's when I realized that was my theory. My theory was is that, you know, it was everything. And that's my slogan, theory is everything, and um, because it's, it's it's a 
a phenomenon that's that's based on one common reason. So it's like I knew right there that my uncle basically gave me my theory. He he in his theory is 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 what I had to see what was being faithful to what I was, you know, believing in. And that's when I knew right there like I found my niche. And I just been sticking at it since. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of times people do, you, you know, you give up, and, and it's the people who don't give up that keep pursuing their dreams that actually make it and, you know, do what they love. Yeah, because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moment where they, you know, that, that day that they do give up, you know, the next that next hour could have been their moment in the next hour, but they wouldn't know because they stopped. Yeah. So, so it's and that's like why I, think, I, I just, yeah, I, I I can't stop it. Oh, I know I can't. Even if I want yeah. to. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it's great that you had people, you know, the love and support that help you, you know, because I think sometimes that's really, people need people to, to encourage them and support them. We all need that. Yeah, yeah. And um, and it, and it, it was it was fun. Um, And then I, you know, started to I have fun with it, but nothing really happened. You know, in in in, in that moment, um, then living in Yonkers, New York, which is right next to the Bronx, um, I uh, was uh, working um, something uh, for an internship with a, a multimedia company, and it was on uh, Canal Street. And September eleventh, two thousand one, okay. uh, on my way to work. Um, I always went to the World Trade Center to get coffee from, you know, Starbucks. And mm-hmm. just that that day at 7 o'clock in the morning, I decided to go to McDonald's, which was like wow. four blocks from the World Trade Center. And that opened my eyes. That changed my life. Um, September just, 11th was the most devastating thing I think that's ever happened to me. So for um, whatever reason, you just kind of did something different. You didn't know why, you just did it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I knew right there that, you know, um, I chill. was given another <laughs> chance, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, my, my my parents moved further north, which was Poughkeepsie, New York. And that was uh, near the Catskills, like toward like Albany, New York. And I ventured up that way. And um, there wasn't really a music scene happening. Um, I mean, but I really, like I said, I, I had nothing really going on with me for music. I just loved to do it until mm-hmm. I like found I found this guy. Um, his name was Joshua Cook, and I mean, this guy was an incredible rapper. And I I was like, oh man, we we got to work. So we decided to work together and. The guys that you know that I knew when I lived in Yonkers, we all came together and formed this nice collective unit called New Unified, and it was really really cool. Had so much fun. We, were, we and in this one, I started to feel like we were trying to be as professional as we can because I started to book studio time. This was my first time working in a music studio. Like mm-hmm. this is no more no more computer with a little <laughs> mic. So then, this is like you know now we feel professional. Mm-hmm. And we we were making all these songs, and we had a nice collection going on. And and I started to talk to people who I knew that knew people in the record industry, and we were going to present them. And uh, one day, um, I'm talking to my friend Josh, and I'm going to the city, and I'm like, hey, you should come with me, and bring some songs, we can meet some people. But he had to play a basketball game, so he's like, I'm going to go play basketball. So I was like, all right. I go to make a long story short. My phone died. I come back up, and people told me that he passed away. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. And so, like, this was, like, my like my best friend, and I lost him. And this was, like, pretty much the heart of our of our unit. Um, he, he passed from having a heart attack at 18 oh. years old, um, and what? he just fell straight on the basketball court. And it was really devastating for me, and that was another – you know, pinnacle in my life that just opened my eyes. And in that point, I said, I don't think I can do this anymore. I, I don't think I have the, the drive to make any more music. And our unit started to fall apart because we we just, we were mourning so hard when, when mm-hmm. we lost them. But some came to me and I said, 
I can't I can't stop. You know, he he wouldn't want this. He 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 knows what we were striving for. He he knows that this is not right to give up. So I kept going. And I was working with this producer who took interest in my my music and he said I, I want to work with you and we started to make some songs and then he said let's make an album. So I was like, wow, this is cool. Let's make an album. Mm-hmm. And um, the album was called, you know, In Theory, I think it was called. <laughs> it was just really mm-hmm. funny. And um, so we, we got all these songs together and came to a point where, like, I don't know what was wrong with the producer, but he just said, like, I, I have no more faith in the project. And I'm oh, like, wait. Wow. Like, wow. Like, I, I, sh- I shed in my story to you. You basically know everything about me from what I've been going through. You know, I lost my best friend, and you're telling me that we can't work anymore because you want to let go of the project? Like, after I'm putting my, like, time, energy, sweat, tears, and blood. And so yeah, this, I, was, I was recording <laughs> all these songs. And so, basically, he, he left me. He left me and until we finally had a, a little war going on on what to do with these tracks. And I was like, well, I want to keep the production. If you're going to stop, like, at least let me have the production that was made. And he finally came to an agreement. He's like, all right, you know what, do whatever you want with it, but I'm not touching another part of the project. Wow. So I was left, I was left with an unfinished project, nowhere to go again, didn't know what to do, um, basically kind of, you know, stuck until I uh, met this guy named uh, Yurik, and this guy just said, hey, I'll work with you. And he wasn't a producer. He was a video uh, director. But um, he said, you know, I know some people. We'll try to pull some strings. And finally I landed this guy in Brooklyn who decided to help me finish my album. So I changed the name. didn't call it In Theory anymore. I called it Plan B because that was my <laughs> next, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, it was, it was you know, got it done. And uh, I pressed a 1,000 copies from CD Baby. And um, it was, you know, no one knew who I was. No one knew who Theory was in my area, Poughkeepsie, New York. And I was like, how am I going to sell a CD and no one knows who I am? <laughs> like, it was <laughs> it was so difficult. And this was in the year 2005. Wow. Um, so what I did was I took 500 CDs. So I basically took a loss. I took 500 CDs and I just gave them away, but I only gave them to women. <laughs> I, I like if like if, if a man got had uh, my CD, he had to buy it because I wouldn't. You couldn't get it for free. Only the girls can get my CDs for free. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> and, uh, I I only gave I and the reason I did that is because I know they talk. Mm-hmm. And and what happened was they started to play my music, and. Before you knew it, like they're like, like, are you theory? Like, yeah, my girlfriend has your CD in my car. Like, she plays your CD literally every day, and I'm like, this is so cool. And uh, yeah, finally, like, I started to press the clubs and like, hey, my name is Theory, you know. And finally, one DJ was like, yeah, I'll, I'll play your songs tonight, and he played it at the disco club, and he played it when one of the radio hosts was there, and the guy was oh, like, who cool. is this? And it was like, this is theory. And so it went from there, and that's when I finally got onto the radio. And then my songs were being played in the radio until one day my song was on a countdown. And then one day what? my song ended up number one in a countdown, and it was the first mm-hmm. time a local artist was ever number one on a, a Clear Channel Top 40 station. So it was, it, was, it was really great. It was a blessing. And um, and here I am, man, you know, still still pushing at it and, now, now I'm international, so it's yeah, it's, just, uh, it's a fun ride. It's a fun ride. Yeah, you can't give up. <laughs> Hell no, I can't. I can't. Man. I, 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 I. Uh, it's funny. I, I was. Uh, this was years. This was before I even realized I wanted to do music. I was walking on Seventh uh, Avenue and I saw a, a psychic, you know, oh. sitting there doing palm readings and stuff. And, and I'm like, I don't believe in that. Like, I don't. <laughs> I pay no mind to it. So the lady's like, she she's staring at me, and she's like, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, really? And she's like, if she's I like, can you tell you one thing about yourself, will, will you sit down and, and, you know, listen to what I have to say? And I was like, all right, go ahead. Tell me. She says, you're an entertainer, and you, you, you want to do music. And I was like, 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold your horse. Okay. <laughs> so I sat down and I, I started to listen to what she had to say and she's talking to me and basically what she said was she said, you know, you're 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 gonna you're gonna want this to happen right away, but it's not gonna happen as soon as you think it is. But it's gonna happen and you're gonna be worldly known. And wow. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing and, and this was before I cut my first single. I'm like laughing at this lady, like, really? Seriously? Honestly? And she she was like, you know, just letting you know and, and stay at it, stay humble, um, and really, really be careful of who's in your circle. So those are her words of wisdom. And, and now when I, like, Easy. think about that now from where I am right now, it makes perfect sense, yeah. you know, of, like, wow, really pay attention to, like, you know, the auras that are, that surround you and listen to the universe when the universe speaks like we should listen and um i've I've really been taking you know so much stride with that like not being so uh stubborn all the time because i'm a i mean i'm a capricorn so I'm, i can be very stubborn <laughs> i understand that <laughs> to your yeah, own yeah. detriment sometimes <laughs> yeah i i really can and um but i i've i've learned to say that everything happens for a reason and just let it be and the forces of nature will bring things full circle. Even when it seems that there's no hope, no light at the end of the tunnel, there's always, always a possibility. So I've I've really, really, you know, took that in and and I've just been living by it day by day. What, like, what a beautiful story and just like such an inspiration, you know what I mean? Because so many people need to hear something like that. Like, they need to hear your I story <laughs> to to get to say okay. So some you know some people are in a rut and then they hear something like this and they're like okay. No matter what situation they're in, whether it's you know just you know in between jobs, working at you know one place, working one to go to another place. You never know. You know what I mean? And just hearing your story and hearing how you overcame so much and where you are today and how you have such good. Um, I don't know. Just, just you. Just the way you talk. It's, it's very inspiring. It really is very inspiring. It is. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I love, I love good people. I mean, and you know, it's the music industry, so you, you're definitely going to have a lot of, you know, negative um, energy that that surrounds you, and it's. Um, and, and the thing about it is, I think what 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 some people. I don't want to say everyone. Some people kind of find it fault is that they focus on the negativity to prevent it happening. You know, you 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 can't prevent it. Like if if something is bound to happen, it's 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 definitely going to come your way. And the more you the more you focus on preventing the negativity, you lose sight on all the positive aspects that surround you. You know, um like you, you if you're outside and you 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 park your bike and you chain up your bike because you don't want no one to steal the bike, and then you come back and the bike is gone, is because you pretty much drew in that negative force to say, like, someone's going to take my bike, you know. And it's 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 and it's all part of the laws of attraction. Um, and that that was kind of like something that I, that I had to really, really, like, study, you know, henceforth to understand just how I go about my day or how I go about working with certain people in this industry. And now, like, when I come into a situation, instead of saying, oh, let me be careful because this person might, you know, jerk me over, just, mm-hmm. you know, I give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And and, and I, I just work freely. So they see, like, man, you know, even though this guy, even though my intentions may be well upon this guy from how this person is looking at me, this guy's energy is so so positive that, like, it's not going to affect him. So I might think twice on what I'm trying to do behind his back. So what I do is that it's it, – you can prevent the negative aspects just by being so positive. You know, it's like – because that's the thing. You know how they say you can't fight fire with fire? And, and that's why, you know, you say to somebody, like, why are you so angry? Why are you so upset? And they don't realize that the reason that so many – you know, things happen with anger, you know, and, and, and turmoil and, and, and people just really being, like, you know, vicious 
about you know with so many things is, is because they're they're putting their negative energy toward it, which is only just attracting it, you know. And and I I just you know just filter all that out, you know, I really do because before you I mean when you realize it, like is it really worth it at the end of the day? You know, it's not at all. No, being unhappy and angry all the time is not. It it's draining. <laughs> No, it is. It, yeah, you're right. It, it takes, it takes, you know, honestly, so much more to be angry than it does to be happy. Like when, yeah. when you're angry, you have to analyze why you're upset. When you're happy, it's just like a free falling flow. It's sometimes it's hard though to to change that and to learn how to to have a different mindset. You know, I think maybe we get stuck in our habits. It does, it does, and the, the reason is is because it, it's 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 what the you know like cognitive dissonance. It's 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 the cognition of when one thing happens, that's where your focus comes on. So you're already on high alert for something else bad to happen, and then it feels mm-hmm. like it's a it's a trickling. It just keeps trickling and trickling and trickling. Like oh, my day just can't get better, you know. And the thing about it is that there are so many other positive aspects that are passing you. You know, you know, people kind of just don't even think about it. Like, for instance, like I have this song that that I, I wrote called Phoenix, and I mean, I, I mean, I I I didn't know what made me write the song other than how I felt when when I just thought of the title Phoenix, and basically the the common reason for what Phoenix is, the resurrection, mm-hmm. and the the song starts off. So my dreams pass by the window. That's why I'm jumping out, free falling with my eyes closed. Please, feet don't fail me now. So the basically the thing is, is like they say, when opportunity passes by, what are you focused on to miss that opportunity? You know, mm-hmm. and that that's the thing. It's like, and that's why it's it's so hard for people to you know to transcend their 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 energies when it's negative to positive because they're so focused on it. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So it's hard to break that cycle. It's hard to figure yeah. out how to to I don't know if it's it's because you're in your head so much and you're constant because I know I I have that problem. I do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I and and I I could I could test, you know, I mean like I I I've been there. I I've I've been in in situations where I didn't know where my next check was going to come. I I I was backed up in car notes. Cars were almost ready to be repoed, look into my account and I'm like minus twenty five. Like I I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, like I mean like I I I was literally sometimes wanting to get into a club to promote my music and didn't have the money to do it so I'm like on the side of the street trying to sell a C D so I can get an entry fee. Like mm-hmm. I, I've been there, you know. Um I've been there where I was so low on gas and had no money for gas and, like, just waited to, like, meet a friend the next day so I had to sleep in my car. Like, I mean, wow. like, just those, those, those days, you know, it, 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 it happens to the best of us. But it's like I could, all I could say every time I've been through this, it's going to get better. It cannot get worse. Wow. It's going to get better. Like, one day I'll look at this and say, I remember when. You know, mm-hmm. and that's exactly where I am now. Like I remember when, because I I know I'm not there anymore. And you're proof of it. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're proof amazing. Sit here and tell us, you know, what you went through, and tell us, you know, it does get better, and it and 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 your dreams can come true. You know, you just have to work for it. You have to believe. You know, and just you saying that it's just it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and and every everyone's dreams can come true, but there are some people, mind you, that. Um, are a little lazy to take it and maybe afraid as well. There's fear, Mm -hmm. you know. um, People have fear because fear of change. Um, They're they're so, you know, they're so used to, they're so confined in what what they're used to doing day to day that because of the change, it's going to recalibrate their entire system. And, but but that's what it takes just, just to hang on to that dream. So I mean, you know, and and it it's, it, it happens. It, it happens for someone who's in New York, and that dream is is waiting for them on a platter in California, but they won't get up and go. Yeah, for fear or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's because 
because a lot of people fear to fail. I don't want to yeah. fail. Because if I, I fail, that. what is everyone going to think of me? Well, you mm-hmm. know, what, what is everyone going to say about me? You know, and and and, I, and sometimes our pride, you know, is just so high um, above the standard that we 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 just kind of just you know bear so much excuse not to chase our dream because we're too prideful. Yeah. And we and we hurt ourselves. Yeah. Exactly. It's so true. Well, theory, we have um, a caller on the line, and sure. I would like to, because, I mean, I could listen to you talk all night, but you have a life, and you have things <laughs> that you have to do, too, you know, so no we'll have to, have to have you again and again and again on our show. But anyway, I'm going to bring on the caller, um, and here she is. You are on the line with Theory, Sandy, and myself. Hi, Erin. Hi, honey. How are you? I'm good, sweetheart. How are you? Very well. Thank you for calling in. Thank well, you. How are you doing? Good. How are you? All right. I have to say, first of all, you just listening to you talk, you're amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Like, honestly, a lot of people out there, when it comes to their job, as they put it, it's about money, and your words are absolutely inspirational. I really do appreciate that. Very, very humble. And and that's the thing right there. You're humbled. And, I mean, I'm a poet, and I know what it is to put your life into what you do. And you're expressing everything about yourself. You're putting you into your work. And I just, I hear everything you say, and when you talk about the fear of failure, and I hate the stigma that society puts on what they consider failure. I don't care if you sell one CD or even if someone just took your CD and listened to it once, you didn't fail. Somebody listened to it and they loved it. That's very not right. a failure. Yeah, I, 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 I applaud to that. You're very, very right about that. I mean, you're just, I don't, what were you, who were your favorites when you were younger to listen to? Um, I mean, before before I was truly, truly into the you know the, the hip hop scene when it was becoming very, very hip and and, and highly marketable. Um, I mean, I, I always you know took in Motown. Um, I mean, my father, he you know between my father and my mother playing you know Michael Jackson and and mm-hmm. Sam Cooke and you know just really, really you know Diana Ross, James Brown, oh like my gosh, I, yes. I, like the songs that were just like so soulful, Stevie Wonder. Like it, it really, it really took me to see that wow, you you could divert your emotion through rhythm. Like this is amazing. And and every time that that I would you know hear a song, I would watch like my father just like really go into another world when he sang these songs. And and it just it, it was a good feeling. I took that good feeling in with it, you know, and just loving everything that Michael Jackson did. I mean that that man seriously molded me into saying that we all can be, you know, that amazing entertainer that we want to be, just mm-hmm. seeing what he has done. Um, so those those are mostly the, the artists that I that I really took on. And then I started listening to, you know, the, the hip hop artists with Nas and Jay Z and, and, and Biggie Smalls and then, then I then I, I, I went into the rock. Um and I, I really started to listen to a lot of like alternative music. Um, Green Day, I'm gonna say, is probably my all-time mm-hmm. favorite. Yeah. Um, and um, I listened to Soundgarden. I was into metal. I, I love Metallica. I love uh, <laughs> Megadeth. You know. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I, I just realized that I, you know, just love music. You see, some, sometimes when people introduce you to other people, they say, "Oh, this is Theory. He's the rapper." I'm like, "I'm not a rapper. I just know how to rap." <laughs> Because no. I, I, you know, I consider myself an artist now because, like, those people that just love music, like, it's artistry. Like, no matter what it is, if it's rock, if it's jazz, if it's mm-hmm. blues, or, you know, it, it's, it's music and, and even country music. Like, we, it, it, all, it all unifies together to, to bring our hearts, our minds to, like, this one common place of just, you know, entering the world of, of the person who's, you know, delivering the song. Most That's definitely. awesome. You're a musical poet. Yeah. 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 That is what you are. See, I like that. That's like my favorite one of my favorite bands is Blue October. And oh, if you wow. haven't if wow. you haven't listened to them, listen to them. They're That's 
I, I and I'm, I'm writing that down right on my list right <laughs> now. And get, get some things off of iTunes because I, I, I love, I love. That's like, oh my, it's such a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I go, I go on iTunes and I just start. <laughs> they I spend probably like a hundred dollars in one day on new music. <laughs> they, they are. I mean, this. I got Travis into them actually. <laughs> yep. yeah. They are. This man, Justin, is like you. He went through hardships in life and he used his music as his journal. And I call him a lyrical genius. <laughs> nice. Wow. But just yeah, I. But I will say for you, when I listened to you, he told me to listen to your music. I was like, okay, cool. I'll listen to that because he knows how I am. And I don't pay attention to videos. I don't look at people first. I close my eyes and I listen. And when I get that, um, as they say in French, the frissons, I got the goosebumps and the hair stood up on my arms. I was like, yeah, this guy's good. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Not I, a problem. I, I do, do appreciate that. Thank you and so much. And you have a promoter here. We're going to plast you all over our Facebooks, definitely. Yes, you will, for um, sure. And um, sure you're that. saying there that you had just said about your, your dreams, that hit home hard, because. and that was absolutely amazing. Oh, and oh, and I am honored to talk to you, and I feel humbled talking to you. Oh, likewise. The feeling is so mutual. So thank you very, very much, and you've just kind of pushed me to go ahead and do what I've been dawdling off to not do for the past 15 years to, to chase my dream. So. Hey, hey, car- carpe diem. Carpe diem. Take Absolutely. it all. Absolutely. And yeah. thank you so much. And you have a fantastic night. It was so great to talk to you. You too. You too. Many blessings. Thank you. Thanks for calling in, Erin. Thank you, honey. I'll Thanks, talk to you Aaron. soon. I love you. Bye. Love you too. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Erin. Thank you. That was my uh, very good friend, Erin. She uh, actually lives up north um, where I'm originally from, about five hours from where I live. And uh, we're very, very good friends. So she's a... Uh, Huge, what, huge what area? What area are you in? I'm sorry. I'm in, I live in um, Maine. I live in Augusta, Maine. Um, oh, and she, my, my she sister, was in my northern sister Maine. Was in Maine. My sister what? No way. Was in Maine. Yeah, my my sister was in uh, was it Brunswick, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, she she was in Brunswick, and then um, I think it was uh, um, is it Tom's River or Tom's something? I forgot. I I, I knew it was uh, I I used to drive there the uh, the nice five hour drive on on 495 and 95 and yeah and we would go there to, to see her and um but she she was in the navy so she was stationed out there in maine oh wow and, um, i used to i used to go out there a lot oh man did it snow wow <laughs> <laughs> yes sir um maine can snow it can definitely snow out there but it was fun i had a lot of fun in maine Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, there's, probably... there's, a, there's, a great, there's a great school out there for music. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Anytime you come back down this way, you know, let me know. And, you know, I mean, there's always something to do somewhere, you know. Oh, wait, oh, I'm no, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> i got to um, check out the East Coast one day. <laughs> yeah, you do, Sandy. Yes, yeah, I know. Do. <laughs> okay, Siri, I have another caller, um, so I'm okay, going to take sure. them on, and I'm going to bring them on right now. Hello? Am I on? Yes, you are. Hi. I just want to say, you have so much wisdom. How old are you? I'm sorry? You, I said you have a lot of wisdom. I'm just curious on your age. Oh, I'm 31, actually, today. I'm 31. <gasps> well, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just turned no, 31 did... today, so I just, I, like, I'm, I, I was, like, it was funny. I guessed it. I was like, it's the last day that I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you brought up in a tight family to just have so much um, faith and belief in anything that you did? Was your family there for you along the way? I mean, we, it, it, I, I, it's been some hardships. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, um, we, we, we definitely were tight, um, but, um, growing up, you know, like my, my mother, like my mother and my father, my biological father, they split by the time I was born. Um, okay. then he, he, he moved to North Carolina and then my, my stepfather who, who I, you know, see him just as much as my own father. Um, he, he was, you know, he was there. And then like, as I got older, like there was, you know, some hardships cause, Living in the city, like is you know things that surround us can can mm. really be, really be a distraction. But I will say, 
there there's no person on this earth that I that I put forth in my mother of just how strong she was of keeping our household together. Um, I mean, she 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 worked two jobs and she was getting her master's degree, and, and she was like you know handling three children in the house doing doing all this and. So it's 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 funny like when I when I talk about that because then I like I I hear someone and not that I don't want to hear someone's story but people who like complain like I can't do it like are you kidding me talk to my yeah. mother yeah yeah proof a little <laughs> my mother held two jobs and she was going to school you can do it you're being lazy and um, yeah. my yeah so my mom she was my rock and um, I, I I really I really uh, you know hold the torch high for her so and and she she made sure that you know, like I, I stayed in school and the best thing my mother has ever done that that I think was basically the, the reason that I think who I am today is when I was in uh high school um uh-huh. my beginning to put me in a, an excluding exchange program and I, I I lived in Belgium for two years oh wow um, wow so I, I I went overseas to stay with a, a, a an exchange family and um because I used to talk to my mom saying that my dream was to go to France. And I always wanted to go to Paris. That was my dream ever since I was 10. Um, so the thing was, I didn't get to go to Paris during um, the... I didn't get to have the family in Paris during this exchange program because of Regents examination. So, like, I went to Belgium, and I, I stayed with the family. And funny, I was in a Dutch neighborhood, but my family spoke French. Um, interesting. I was, I was able to hear. <laughs> so I, I, I am affluent in French. Je parle français. Um, parle français. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I also speak Dutch. So like I, all my best friends were Flemish, and then my family was French. And I still had the chance to go to France, which is really cool because I didn't realize that they had this Euro Trail that went everywhere in Europe, which is the coolest thing ever. So that oh, and like being back, I was, I was fifteen when I was over there, so I came back, you know, 17, you know, in the middle of 17. Came back a changed man? I I was completely, like, I mean, from attitude, from from, uh, basically my diction to the way I dress. Like, in my high school, people was like, this guy is weird. (laughs) (laughs) People would just say, I I was completely different. But it, it really shaped me because... I saw a different world, and I realized that it's not just where I am in the city. Like, there's a there's a huge world ahead of us here. There's a huge world. You're absolutely right. And well, I'm sure totally you know that I'm, oh, I'm Travis's mom. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and <laughs> you, I, a lot of what you were saying, I don't know, Travis, is that that's how you felt, but a lot of it is how you live, Trav. Yeah, you, 100%. I was going to say that. Yeah, you are just the, Travis is the one that just, motivates people to do things and don't give up and and that is just I and I tell them every day I said Travis when you go to work people around you that are negative you know what just continue being positive because that that will bounce off on them it 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 just makes the world go round and you are I think in if in your albums or whatever you should always have like little inspirational quotes because you're just very good with them mm. yes yeah I just that uh, a lot of what you were saying, I was trying to absorb it. I just was like, wow. Yeah, it just and, and inspiring. Mother, when you said it, when, well, I wasn't thinking it that way because, of course, you're thinking it in a mother's way when you're saying, mm-hmm. um, you know, like what I, at work and all that and how I am. I wasn't thinking of it that way. I was thinking of just when he was talking about you and how his mother and how, you know, much she was his rock. Well, you're you're my rock. You know what I mean? So it's just that inspiration. Yeah. 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 You know what? You don't need 100 friends. You need one. Yeah, exactly. one, just stay clear of the negative and, you know, stay with the good people and it'll work out. Well, I just want to say it was just a, a great pleasure to listen to you. And uh, when Travis told me you were on, I did a little bit of research, and I I just wish you the best. Thank you so and, much. Thank uh, you. Good luck with everything, and I'll talk to you later, Mr. Travis, ma'am. <laughs> yes, you will, ma'am. Take care. Thank you for calling. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye. Love you. Bye. Love you too, babe. Bye bye. Oh, that was so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you talked to my very best friend. Well, my very best friend in real in that I've met in you know 
hung out with for about five, well, I've known her for about six years now, Aaron, and oh. my mother. So you've talked to uh, two people that are very uh, important in my life. So, uh, And you're on the phone with my fabulous co-host. So, I mean, this is great. Thank you so much, Theory. Um, I hope uh, if you want a break to take a sip of water, we have about eight minutes left. Um, I want to say if there's any other callers that want to call in, we can take about one more call, and then we're going to let Theory go on for his night. Um, just call in one seven two four. Four 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 seven four four four. Enter the caller ID one two five eight two nine pound one in pound and you're in. And so theory um, that I, I appreciate you doing the fan calls. Uh, I always like to try to you know have the listeners call in. You know and uh, it, it, it's just a great chance for them to you know it's like tonight is a meet and greet. You know they're um, being introduced to you. So yeah yeah I'm I I'm um. I love it because, like, I, I sometimes, you know, try to to, to stop and see how it is uh, on the outside looking in, you know, because I mean, I'm I'm always busy, you know, just delivering, delivering, delivering. Yeah. So, like, I mean, just to stop and see, like, oh, this is, you know, what what people see when they when they view me. This is what they think of me. Like, it's it's very 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 nice, you know, and it's so refreshing, um, especially being in the industry that I'm in, you know, especially being in the position that I'm in to do, like, you know, rap, hip-hop, and, you know, just, just for what it's faceted, you know, because it it, 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 it holds, you know, it holds an image, and, and, and the image that it that it holds isn't necessarily positive. I mean, like, a, a, lot, a lot of it is, like, you know, whether it's violence, whether it's, you know, drugs, whether it's, you know, mm-hmm. sex, and just things that are just not really like, you know, something that people want to take every day for, for lifestyle. And, I, you know, even though I can't judge, you know, um, because a lot of the people that do this in this industry is is, is, is doing it for the quick buck. Um, a lot of them don't even live this type of lifestyle. You know, um, it's, it, it, it's almost like a, a, a very cruel dictator who you say, how can he have so much malice in his heart for all these people in a nation that he doesn't care about? And in his own household, he's the perfect father. <laughs> like, so it's like, it's all, it's, 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 it's all a, 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 a front, you know, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's just a facade. And it's just very sad that that facade is marketed the way it is with all these mega million dollars put behind it. And then our youth takes on to it and they don't know that this is a facade. They think this is real and then they right. try to incorporate in their own lifestyle and that's why our, our language is changing, that's why values are changing, that's why morals are changing. Like young women don't know what it means to be sexy anymore. You know, they they, they, they only pay attention to what they see to think this is sexy. Like this is what I have to do to be sexy. This is what I have to do to please a guy. This is what I have to do to get his attention. You know, and, yeah. and it's just so many things that are just like so shaded, so twisted, so misconstrued, and it, it, that's the sad part about it. You know, like I said, I, I don't, I don't judge the people to say whether that they're, they're wrongdoers, and 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 because you mean like I, I, I'm not the one to judge because like you know I, I have my own life to to really, you know, focus on. But I just feel that it's just, you know, sad that that image is held. So, you know, when, say, if someone says, oh, he's a rapper, you know, they're like, oh, he's one of those. You know, so <laughs> it's like, it's, you know, trying to, you know, kind of not be thrown into the bubble of, of the norm. And, mm. um, you know, it's just music has, you know, and, and that's, that's the thing about it because music is so influential. And and if people understand the power of it, then they realize like, wow, this is this is a very very powerful tool, you yeah. know. Um, I mean, you can take anyone from Al Qaeda and ask them if they heard of Michael Jackson. I bet you they tell you they have, because they have. Sure. And 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 that's why they they send artists musicians over for these troops to perform because this is what puts them in the very comfort zone to listen to music. Like, this is what they, 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 they feel at ease with because these guys are warring every second of the hour defending a country or or the person next to them. 
And when you put music into it, it it, it brings it brings things at ease. It, it, it it's like oh, take me to a place of serenity. And mm-hmm. music and Michael Jackson is right. It, it it's the power of healing. Like you know that song, heal the world, make it a better place. Like he yes. he wasn't yeah. lying when he said that. Like it, this is exactly what music does. It heals you. And people just have to just take it more seriously, you know, instead of just like this marketing engine to like, you know, make so much money off of this one and that one and this one and that one, you know, but it is, it is what it is for now. But it, I I think, you know, with the right people, the, the, you know, the, the right people throughout the engine, it, it could make that difference. It can make that change. Yeah. So true. It's so true. And just, I mean, I, it, you, you. There's so many things you talked about tonight. I'm gonna have to go through and like write, take notes of what you said. <laughs> if we're on cards, so amazing. The next time we talk, I can compliment you on it because you said so much tonight that I want to just like. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I do. I do go off no. my tangent and no, no. I go here and I go no. there. I do apologize no. for that. No, theory. you're very it has to do with inspirational. That. Yes, yes, but, and that's exactly it. But there's so many things that I could touch on, but we have two minutes left. So mm-hmm. I can't even, like, touch on any of those. So know that you – I would be – okay, I can't even get to that point yet. So, okay, just know that you inspired myself again. Um, Sandy and I, you know, we've been doing this talk show since last April. And at some point we want to try to see what we can do with this talk show, um, whether it's, you know, going – Get, I mean, going for, I mean, big company, you're trying to find a management for it or, you know, make it into a TV show um, where we have, you know, our own talk show on TV. You never know. It just we have thoughts going on. Um, we just have, I have a lot of ideas. I mean, especially, you know, just, anyway, you, you've inspired me to just work on, I, I've already started working on things, but to not give up in it and uh, right. just to ensure that I, Stick with it and follow through with my plans. So thank you. Right. Cool. No problem. And I'm 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 so I'm so happy that we, you know, found each other on Twitter to connect and and you asked me to be on and and I and I'm here. Like I'm I'm truly 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 honored to be here. Oh, thank you. We're so and very we are, blessed to have you. <laughs> yeah, very honored Happy and blessed morning. to have you. Um, Sandy, before we go, was there anything you'd like to say to Theory, Sandy? Oh, just thank you so much. Everything, it's just amazing just listening to you. You're very inspirational, and, and you just have such great words of wisdom. It really touched my heart. Oh, well, I I, 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 have, I have no words. I'm, I'm speechless mm-hmm. of just how honored I am to even be on the show to, to you know, share my story. I'm, I'm, I'm honored that there were people here to listen to it, and thank you guys for having me to do that. Oh, it's, oh, it's an honor and pleasure. Time. Honor yeah, and pleasure. Now, pleasure. before we go... Um, I just want you to, is there, do you want to, is there anything you want to promote? Um, and, you know, don't be humble for a second. Just promote <laughs> anything you want to promote. Um, give out your website. Give out your site for your um, your music, the, the two links you gave me. Um, give out anything you want to give out and anything you want to share, anything you're working on, anything, just so your fa- the, fa- the people listening can uh, check you out. Okay, um, I feel like I'm giving that Grammy speech that I give you like 30 seconds. Do it up. <laughs> before, the, the, before the wrap-up music comes on. <laughs> yeah, um, right. <laughs> you can, I mean, you can find me at theoryiseverything.com slash uh, EPK. Um, that's EPK, theoryiseverything.com slash EPK. Um, that's where you can, like, read my bio. You can see videos. You can listen to music. And what I'm, what I'm up to now um, in the works is I'm, I'm putting together an album with um, some producers out in Italy, and um, we signed with a very, very, very well-respected record label called Energy Records, and we signed with Universal Records um, out in France, and we've released our song called Outer Space. It's already out. The video is out. I shot it in Los Angeles, um, and we're going to put out more songs with it, and, um, you know, and there's some artists that, to be on the lookout, there's a beautiful young lady by the name of Jasmine Villegas, um, she used to date Justin Bieber, and um, <laughs> she she lives in Los Angeles, and she's coming out with a single, and um, you you'll probably hear of her, um, kind of like a Selena Gomez look like that feel. Um, I I wrote her single, so um, she oh, that fun. Out. There's a, a a young man by the name Rap Salazar. Look out for him. He's located in the Philippines, 
and he was just on the Ellen show, and he just, like, blew, um, you know, a lot of the America, America away with his voice, and I'm working on his next single. So oh, just, great. yeah, be on the lookout for all of that, and just thank you again. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. You. It was a pleasure. Yeah. I know we keep on saying it, but it was. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and hopefully I'll get that single to, you know, for Britney Spears to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for that. Yes, I think you should. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I'm pushing for that. Um, and what we would like to do, um, theory, I'd like to have you back again because I don't think, I mean, I think that we could have you back like for every day, and <laughs> there would always be something that you'd say that would be like, oh my god, okay, I need to write this down and remember this. So um, we will keep in contact if you'd like to ever come back. I mean, it's sure. an honor. Yeah, we'd love it. Sure. I would love to. I I wouldn't second guess it. Awesome. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, be- best of luck with um, your work that you have to do tonight. Um, keep in touch and keep us yeah. posted on whatever you want us to promote for you, and we'll continue sharing the joy of um, knowing you and uh, your music and your work. So just know that it's going to be promoted well. So, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. And, and if anyone else, you know, has Twitter, you can follow me at TheoryNY. You've been listening to Gab Town Divas with host Travis Nadeau on the Air Nation Radio Network. Thank you for joining us.